Welcome back, wieners. I'm pumped. I have not filmed a video like this in quite some time. We're kicking it off today in my office. And uh, the reason why we're kicking off today's video in my office is because there's something that I need to show you. Something that is super important and that everyone on this channel needs to see. Uh, the other day I was scrolling through Instagram, as I usually do when I'm, you know, on a slow bite or taking a poop or something like that. And I found this absolute gem. But there's this one video in particular that I found that literally made my jaw drop. I was like, okay, this is either some sort of joke or it's, uh, you know, not real. Like someone just did this for some Insta clout, you know, some Insta fishing hype, a little bit of bass fishing buzz, if you will. After watching the video, I did a bit of research and I realized this is 100% legit. I'm going to stop talking. Let the video speak for itself. Um, here we go. We'll watch it together. This is a repost, by the way, this is not the original video. Yeah, okay. So, so either this guy is three foot four and he's tossing around a 10 inch swim bait, or he is a normal sized human being and that lure is literally bigger than the biggest bass I've caught all year. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was in disbelief when I first saw this. I thought it was a gag. I was like, okay, someone just made this in their garage. Um, no. No, this is, this is legit. This is a, an actual lure made by an actual company that you can actually buy. So I dug a little deeper. I did some research, did a little bit of recon. This lure is made by a company called Manifold, Japanese company. If you're not familiar with the Japanese style of fishing, it is quite literally insane. It's no surprise to see uh, that a enormous lure like this is coming out of the Japanese market. This lure I believe is called a De Niro, kind of like Robert De Niro, but instead of Robert De Niro, it's a lure and it's made out of 100% horse leather, horse skin. It's made out of horse skin. So they killed, a, they killed a horse. <laughs> there is a dead horse that, 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 <laughs> this is so hard to wrap my head around. You're fishing with a dead horse. If I was a horse and you know, I was on the chopping block and this was my last, you know, breath. The last thing I would think is, gee, they're going to make me out of a lure, maybe a glue factory, something like that. Maybe you just bury me in the backyard. But the last thing I would think if I was a horse is, is I'm going to be made, <laughs> made out of a, um, a lure. Not only a lure, but something as ludicrous as this. So I got a little spreadsheet here. This lure is 21.65 inches. That's uh, that's almost two feet. The weight of this lure is 43 ounces. I suck at math, but here's the equation of how much this would weigh in pounds. It's a slow floater. Oh good, so I can throw this over grass, perfect. And in parentheses it just says level one. What's level two? This lure is level one. I don't know. I don't want to know what level two is. Leather, 100% horse hide, vegetable tanning by I apologize in advance. Shinki Hikaku Co. Limited. So it's a company that, third party company that maybe helps them make this lure. So the leather lures are born in 2011 to capture the largest bass lurking in Lake Biwa. If you don't know anything about Lake Biwa, pause this video, look it up, and then come back. Essentially, uh, Lake Biwa is the birthplace of, I believe, either the official or the unofficial world record bass that's tipping the scales of over 20 pounds. So it makes sense. You know, a big lure like this. And a, and a big lake with a big bass, surely you're gonna catch a world record. It's like just add water type stuff, uh, super simple. The Lelaru has been greatly strengthened by the power of two biggest bass hunters on Lake Biwa. These, I could just picture these two guys like literally forging this lure out of the, the pits of Moria, like some Lord of the Rings <laughs> I'm sorry, this has me so weak. There's actually two pages, is there two pages? No, this is just a really thick piece of paper. The leather has been great, uh, I already read that. The stainless steel frame is the basis of the strength of De Niro, uh, with two eyes, which I know I'm just realizing the poly, Polythylene, polythylene body creates the texture of bait fish. Interesting. I gotta buy that. De Niro is like living bait by covering them with leather. A little bit of uh, English, Japanese translation error there. The leather lure does not get colder than the ABS lure. I don't know what ABS stands for. It has the same body temperature as bait fish and the lower the water temperature, the more powerful it will be. This is getting scientific. Maybe I knocked this thing a little bit too early as I'm reading into it. It seems like there's definitely a uh, some well thought out science backing this lure and its design and why they had to kill a horse just to make it. Please use the leather to absorb water. Okay, I don't know what else I use the lure for if I were to buy it, which I would never would, it's insane. Uh, when adjusting the weight, stab the nail sinker between the seams on the abdomen to adjust, that sounds painful. Uh, leather lures tend to float when the water temperature is low and tend to sink when the water temperature is high. Imagine receiving a pamphlet every time you purchase a lure and it tells you this detailed stuff. I like this, this is nice. After using the lure, hang it. <laughs> this is this is absolutely gold. After using the leather lure, hang it 
and let it dry slowly. This is this is nuts. Just like hang it up like a towel, like a beach towel. Oh God, imagine that. You just have a a, a laundry uh, thing. What was it called? What? I'm drawing a blank. Imagine hanging up your lures like laundry. I, this is brilliant, I love this. As the use of leather lure progresses, the surface foil becomes weathered and becomes like a weak fish. Please try various settings to find out the characteristics of leather lures. There needs to be someone that patents the word leather lures. That, that just rolls off the tongue so nicely. So we have a better idea as to what this lure is all about. Now let's now let's see how much this thing costs. We, we both can, can guess that this is not gonna be a, uh, a bargain bin Bass Pro Shop lure by any means. The size in itself is, is probably worth a Bentley, uh, let alone all the components that are made to use this. I mean, like I said, I haven't said it already enough, they used a real horse to make this lure. So let's let's go on the computer, uh, look up to see how much this thing is. I'm sure it's asinine. Holy <laughs> Wow. That, that beats my expectations. If you can't read it for yourself, I'll just say it out loud. $1,147.99 will get you a manifold De Niro. A manifold Robert De Niro, forged from genuine horse leather from the pits of Moria, from the two best Blake BY anglers themselves. You could buy it up front, or you could submit four payments of $287. You could, be put on, you could basically be put on a, a loan uh, for, for a for a swim bait. Yeah, my head is also melting at the moment too. So listen, okay, so here's the thing. Everyone is entitled to how they wish to spend their money. Okay, that's up to you. You know, if you wanna buy a, a, a Lamborghini Aventador, uh, you wanna buy a Honda Civic, you wanna waste a bunch of cash, blow a bunch of cash, that is up to you. But I draw the line right here when I say that buying a swim bait that is as niche as this one, that is as big as this one, that is just so technically specific for that amount of money, you would have to be just about clinically insane. I don't know who is actually going on Tackle Warehouse and dropping a thousand dollars on a lure that is made of, what is it made of again? Oh, that's right, horse leather. They probably used like a really nice horse too, like one from like uh, the Kentucky Derby or something like that. That's probably why it's so expensive. I mean, I would hope that that's what they would use, you know? The horse gets old, they gotta put it down, then yeah, well, I guess we'll just, what do we do now? Turn it into a lure. Bonkers, man. I, I don't know who was actually buying this. I don't know why they would make something like this. You know, and if you did buy one of these and you know, bless your soul, I, I just, I can't, I can't sympathize with you. All right, listen, 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 listen. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. This is a great opportunity for a video, right? To, to buy the world's most expensive swim bait and, and get it, get it ordered all the way from, from Japan to, so I could show you guys and here it is. Let me tell you, it feels as good as it sounds. That is that is some horse leather right there, I must say. This is where the rampage in the comment section is probably going to ensue. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, yeah, what the hell is wrong with you, John? I, I tend to collect big lures. I like collecting swim baits. I like collecting very niche things. For example, like uh, there's this giant lure I bought the other day. I thought this thing was big, and then I was like, oh, wow, yeah, mm. Th this could eat that other bait that I just showed you. I'm pretty sure this is about 14 inches. This is an enormous swim bait, like the biggest that I think I own until I until this little piece of meat came my way. It's literally a piece of meat. It's a hand cannon of a swim bait. It's this is my head for perspective. I've got a huge head, by the way. This is kind of leading up to the point of today's video. And if you clicked on this video, judging from the title and the thumbnail, you probably know that I already bought the thing, so it's no surprise. At least I was dumb enough to buy the thing. The reason why I'm making this video today is I want to shed some light on a lure that is is just so extreme. That is that is an anomaly in of itself. A bait that is truly unique in its own facet. There's nothing like this. Find me something else that is like this right now. Um, I, I challenge you. Maybe you can. I really don't think you can. I figured we'd take this out in the water and we'd actually fish with it with no anticipation to actually catch anything, but at least see how it swims, see what the hype is all about, because this is actually a pretty popular lure, apparently, over in, uh, overseas, in Japan. I uh, even happened to buy, I even happened to buy the little one, too, so we, we're gonna throw this around as well. It's literally the same bait, but just, I mean, obviously significantly smaller. There we have it, okay, cool. Hopefully I've got your attention now. Let's uh, pack all these swim baits up, head out in the water, and see what the De Niro is all about. She's a little heavy today. 
heavier than normal. Come on, sister. Oh, there you go. Here we are on the water doing big things. We actually have this whole little pond to ourselves today, which is quite nice. Turn the motor off so you guys can hear me. Oh, love it. Got our little buddy here, or should I say, uh, big buddy, the Denaro. The two, what is it? 550, 550 Denaro. Look at the size of this meat bucket. We're gonna throw this around today, like I said, like I promised. And this kind of goes without saying, but uh, one thing I can't promise is that we're gonna catch one on this bait. I would like to maybe see what kind of interest this draws in. Um, I did some research and a little bit of looking up and on the way here to the pond. One thing that I did find is that this lure has the intent of, of course, catching fish, but its real purpose seems to be drawing fish out of general areas. So it's kind of like a fish finder in of itself. One of my buddies, Jeffrey, who's a big swim bait head too, also acknowledged that this is a bait, of course, you can put hooks on it and potentially hook up to a Goliath largemouth bass or smallmouth. But the, the real reason why this bait is made is just to see what is lurking down on the surface. One thing I will say about big swim baits is the bigger they are, generally speaking, the more interest it draws in a fish. You may not always get a commitment, a fish that's gonna open up its mouth, but it is going to kind of check out what's going on. The hooks that they put in here are quite small. T just take a look at the hooks that they put in. This is pretty, pretty kooky. Ow. Oh my God, they're sharp. I would hope so at least. For a $1,000 bait, these better be the sharpest hooks on earth. What am I supposed to do with those? What am I supposed to do with these little hooks on this jet? Like, I guess you can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hooks on there. But I mean, still, geez, like, just doesn't doesn't seem like it would it would make sense. Nonetheless, we're going to put some hooks on it, <laughs> and try to throw it anyway. I did also bring the the little manifold out here too. Why did I say it like that? It's manifold, not manifold. Peyton Manning fold. I did bring the little uh, patino out. This is a 278. This huge still big but a little bit more realistic i think i can actually catch a fish on this but we're also actually going to put in some some hours and some effort to uh catching one on the, the patino 278 sounds like the name of a fighter jet uh let's get active tie these puppies on and see if we can come tight it's just a lot to, to grasp i'm just going to start putting hooks on it that's what we're going to do i'm just going to literally litter i'm just going to litter this thing with hooks as you probably guessed too, I don't have a, a really a big enough rod for this, so we're gonna have to use the heaviest one I have, which is like an eight foot uh, heavy action swim bait rod. Wow, this is intense. Jeez, dude. I don't wanna ruin the bait too, I really like this thing. Oh geez, I just hooked it. How the, how the hell do you get a split ring on such heavy duty, like Jesus. There we go, I got one on there. Just putting hooks on this bait is insane. Like I've messed around with a lot of big saltwater gear before, but these split rings are very serious. You could use this stuff for big saltwater fish. <laughs> Look how dorky that hook, hook looks. Oh my God, I'm literally just gonna put a couple hooks on here. I'm really not anticipating a huge bite. Okay, here it is. This is the heaviest rod I own. It's a seven, it's an eight footer, really. In this scenario, I should be throwing like a musky rod, but I don't have a musky rod. I live in Texas. This thing weighs 40, what is it, 42 ounces? Holy sh there's no way. All right. <laughs> oh my God, this is way too heavy. I can barely pick this thing up with this rod. I really don't want to break this rod because I just got it. I don't even know if I can cast this thing. Like I seriously don't know if I can cast this thing. <laughs> Look at that bend. This thing weighs like three freaking pounds. I'm pretty certain I won't be able to actually get a, a good cast in the slur, but I am gonna try. Oh, wow, ooh. Ooh, it looks good. All right, we gotta try. Try a really quick cast. <laughs> I'm so afraid I'm gonna break it off too. I've got this on like 25 pound fluoro. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just kind of lob it out to my left. Okay, and then we're gonna troll in rolling towards the bank and we're gonna swim this thing back and see how it looks it is so much heavier than you'd think like I thought I could do it on this eight foot rod I'm like well I, I boat flip you know threes and fours it shouldn't be that hard no this thing is like Godzilla status oh my gosh it looks I mean that's pretty ridiculous like I'm not gliding this thing as to how the experts probably do but It looks sick. It really does look sick. Oh 
Oh my gosh. Now, obviously with the right rod and some better line, and of course, more technique, this would swim way better, but it looks so freaking cool. Oh, dude, it looks unreal under the water. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine like if just a nine pounder comes up and just crushes this thing? Okay, I see. So once you actually like get it gliding, it starts to sink, but after the cast, it just sits there idle and floats. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking cool. It looks like a little baby tarpon. That's really what it looks like. Look at that. I mean, they weren't lying. It does what it's advertised to do. Glide like a mother pull. It's sick, it's a cool lure. I mean, if you take the time and set aside the fact that this thing, it costs as much as like a used car and that it, you know, is the size of a bowling ball, it is pretty unique, it's cool. It's a very interesting lure. I would love to throw something like this in salt water, like for big giant trevally or like a big tarpon, like that would make sense. And I know this lure was designed with the intent to lure big largemouth out of their hiding holes, but this would be a really interesting lure to try in a saltwater scenario. It, it looks so cool. Like we'll do some underwater footage here in a little bit, but this is pretty, this is a pretty wicked bait. I just can't cast it. Like the... <laughs> Let me try, try to get a quick lob. Once it's in the water too, it just gets heavier because like we've said a thousand times before, it's made of horse leather, horse hide. So it's, it's now heavier than it, when it was when I first pulled out of the, the package. All right, one more cast and we're gonna put this thing away. All right, God, it's so heavy now. It is literally just full of water. Oh, that was a mega cast. I think I might get bit here. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, Jesus, dude. This is crazy. Part of me wishes I would have bought a rod specifically for this lure, but you know, the lure is $1,000, so it's pretty much broke after that. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, this is great. You and I both have a better idea as to how this bait swims, and if I'm being 100% honest, it's freaking beautiful like this is probably one of the best and easiest glide baits i've ever used and it weighs 42 ounces that little transcript that came with this lure was not lying they definitely put a lot of effort and intricacy into getting this thing to not only look pretty insane but also to glide like unbelievably so like look at that oh i guess i could throw this thing out here couldn't i i didn't try that did i well i guess it floats so we might as well try let's see if i can throw it out there <laughs> ready <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can barely throw the thing, it's so heavy. Oh, incredible. I like it. I like how it swims. I don't think it's very practical. It's pretty obvious. What I do think would be pretty good, and I actually think could get a bite today, is the little manifold. This little, um, damn, what is it called? Patino? Little Patino. It's a little Patino. They love the Italian names. Robert De Niro and Patino and Spaghetti and Barzacchini and all that good stuff. Anyway, we're gonna try this guy. I'm gonna tie this on, I'm gonna put some hooks and we're actually gonna see if we can catch a fish on the small one. Comment below right now if you'd like to see me go somewhere where there's giant saltwater fish and throw this bait. I think one of my goals for either this year or next year is to actually catch a fish on this lure. A little Texas pond is probably not the best place to do that, but I think we can make it happen. Drop a comment, let me know, inspire me, get me going. I really do like this thing though, it, it is insane. Like look at this shimmer on it, ooh, it looks pretty deadly. Let's cut this puppy off and uh, throw her on the little one. Putting some hooks on the patino. This makes a little more sense. Just for reference, I'm pretty sure these are the same size hooks that were on the dinero. It's the same ones they give you for the 287. That doesn't really make any sense to me, but hey, they're the designers, not me. I'm just some guy who can't catch a 10 pounder. Completely blunt here. That's one of the reasons why I bought that lure. I thought dropping $1,000 on a swim bait would be a sure fast way to, to uh, catch a 10, but looks like that bait was a little too heavy for me. Think about that. That's pretty good. It's a floating bait when it's idle, but then when you start reeling it in and twitching it and getting it to glide, it actually sinks below the surface. Really unique concept. A lot of big glide baits are, are kind of like that, but this one is just one in a million. It's so different. I've thrown epoxy, I've thrown all wood, I've thrown balsa. It's the first time I've ever thrown animal flesh at a large mouth. Damn, that's sick. Oh, oh, 
got one following me. I got one following me. I got one following me. I have a follower. I have a follower. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on. Oh, I hope you guys saw that. I actually had a follower. I had two fish on me. There's two bass on the swim bait. Damn it, dude, that was close. I got right next to that tree and he was there. I think that's where I pulled him off from. Didn't eat it, but he looked at it. As you can see, I put down the big swim bait. No luck, I literally fished the entire pond, which is not that much water, but I literally fished the entire pond to see if I get any sort of fish that would feel bad for me and eat that thing. I had one follow, actually I had two followers at the same time, and that was about it. So I figured I'd, I'd use my time a little bit more wisely, try to catch some fish on the A-Rig. There's a lot, of, oh my gosh, there's a lot of bait down here right now, and the sun is setting, so just seeing if I can donk a few before we head in. I at least like to show you guys an actual fish today, opposed to just talking about a lure. Even if we can't catch a fish on a lure today, I still want to find an opportunity to throw both those baits again and actually succeed, like actually hook up and, and catch a giant. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think I picked the best spot. This is just kind of a little mud hole that has a few bass here and there. I thought I could make it happen, but it was just wishful thinking on my end. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Boy, that thing stopped me. Good Lord, nice fish. Well, I tried and I failed. Couldn't catch a fish on the Patino 278, which is the smaller one. I say smaller in quotes because it's really not that small. And of course, we weren't gonna catch anything on the big one. I will say I wanna make it my mission either this year or next year to try to catch a fish on the big one or at the very least the little one too. I definitely think I could catch a largemouth on the Patino. The Patino is sick. The Dinero swims so nice. Like it's actually better swimmer, I think, than the Patino, but it's just fucking huge but uh before i head back to the ramp i want to show you guys something i thought you'd find this a little bit interesting to put in perspective really how large and in charge this lure is here's your dinero and uh this probably close to a two pound bass in comparison just take a gander at that this is our uh this is not a very small fish it's a dink but it's not that small and this is my lure it dwarfs this bass. I just wanted to exemplify the perspective of what a bass would look like next to this lure with this lure hanging out of a bass's mouth. So, kind of interesting stuff. Well, that is going to conclude. Oh, well, that's a soggy tripod. That is going to conclude today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. A little bit of a different episode. I, I know I used to film stuff like this in the early stages of this channel, and I want to get back to my roots, as I said in some previous uploads, but uh, this was fun, even though it definitely hurt my bank account in my pocket. This is something that I don't think people get to see every day, and I like finding unique lures, finding unique equipment when it comes to fishing, and sharing it with you guys on my channel, even if it means uh, I, I take a dent um, in the finance. With that being said, I want you guys to like the pinned comment that I'm gonna leave on this video, um, so that way I've got an idea as to how many people really are interested in this kind of stuff, and wanna see me catch a fish furthermore on the big lure maybe we do some different lures i don't know you guys will have to let me know if there's a crazier lure out there than this one um, today that we've talked about today thanks so much stay safe catch fish and as always folks keep fishing never stop